Hey, what's up guys? This is Team Harlife Captain Albert Sasuche, and I've got a video for you today to further explain what happened yesterday. What we think happened yesterday, okay? So, we, last night we posted the video of us going out to the Jetix to go hit jacks. They were out there, they are sighted, we were catching them. So I was like, well, instead of making the long walk, especially we slam into these jacks, I didn't want to have to carry, you know, 500 pounds, 300 pounds, 200 pounds of jackarels off the beat, off the jetty, get them all beat up, and then also to worry about all the tackle that we were taking out there. So my intention was to go fish the jetties off a boat so we could pull them right to the boat, net them, put them into the cooler so they can immediately start to stay super fresh. That's the thing about the jetties is, you know, you're taking your baits out there or you're catching your baits in there. Then you gotta walk them off the jetty. Oh, that's some hard work, man. So I, I truly give it up to the guys that are fishing the jetties. I mean, they make that walk, they catch their fish, and they tow them off of there, man. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all are hard, dog. Uh, straight up, y'all, y'all, y'all definitely got it, you know. And wish I had the time to be able to do that. I just, I don't. So for me, it was gonna be easier for me to get on a boat go to the end of the jetties and, you know, travel along. And that's the other thing too. Sometimes you're on the jetties and you're just out of casting distance of the fish schools. So I didn't want to be sitting on the jetty too to make that trip and not be able to hit any of the fish. However, we didn't catch a single jack. We ran into the schools of Bonita as well. I mean, they came up to the surface and were blowing up and everything else. And we couldn't hook a single one to save our life. Now, I talked with some offshore captains and stuff like that about what went on. I was like, hey man, you know, that it's pretty crazy because I know when I'm on the jetty or I'm on the pier and I land in a school, I'm hooking a fish like all the time. Well, out there, there was a whole bunch of glass minnows and baby Manhattan shad and I mean, it's just, they're galore. They're all they're so thick, you can go like this, you can catch them with your hands. So these. Bonita were coming up and they're eating sideways like this. They come up with their fin up and they're just eating like across the surface like that. But every time one of our lures would get in the mix, either to the right, to the left, in the middle of them, it didn't matter. It would spook them and they would take off. And so the captains were explaining, they were like, hey, because you weren't matching the bait that was in there. I kind of figured that. So I even threw a Zabinki rig in there trying to get them to bite and we didn't get anything until late afternoon that day. So one of the other things we noticed too, that when we were first heading out there, there was, it was a real overcast. Well, about 30 to 45 minutes, the sun started coming out and that's when we started seeing the guys on the jetties actually hooking up too. I was like, well shoot, man, we're good, you know? But the thing is too, being on a boat was something else I was taking into consideration too, because I'm a jetty fisherman when I fish the jetties or on the pier and stuff like that. So I know what it's like to have some boat just come up and park right, like right where I'm casting. So with the boat captain, we knew to keep the boat far enough away to where these guys can cast and we could cast without crossing our lines. That was the major issue that I wanted to prevent. I didn't want us, you know, I didn't want to hear them, you know, complaining that we're too close and because I know what it's like to be the guy on the jetty. But at the same time, too, we were there because the fish were there. They weren't, if they were schools far away, we chased those first before we came near the jetty. So that's what we mainly did. We chased all them schools that were further away from the jetty because we didn't want to mess with the guys over here. But when they disappeared, that's when we got closer. But like I said, when, as far as we could cast, we, we would watch them first, see how far they could cast, and we'd keep a barrier there. Now, that's going to bring me to my next point, and I'm going to show this to you on the my drawing board because this is the only way I can explain why we didn't hook up, even though the guys on the jetties were hooking. Check this out. I think I got a got a lot of stress on my mind. It's a nice day to go. Yeah, I got a line. I'm a caller. The whole team. All right, guys, so, you know, you got your beach here, and then, you know, you got, not even that far, it's got the jet. Make sure I'm still good to go, yes. All right, so, we had the jetty come out, like 
this. And then we would see the blow ups of schools out here, you know, and some way out here. You know, they were all over the jetty. So what we would do is we would chase these schools first. We'd come way out here and throw our lures. And we were trying the gator spoons of all different, from two ounce, five ounce, seven ounce, no, two ounce, three ounce, three and a half ounce, and even some five ounce. And we were throwing the heavier spoons so we can get further to the school without spooking it with the boat. Because that's another thing too, you don't want to spook them with the boat. Now, we didn't catch there, they disappeared, so we came near the jetty. But as the guys on the jetties were casting, they would hit a certain distance, you know, some further than others and stuff like that. But they were pulling fish in that way. We were casting this way, okay? We were actually drifting one time, and mind you, we didn't catch anything. We had another boat come around, cut off our drift because we were getting pushed toward the jetties, and we would start out here and drift in to, to that point, and then we, we knew we were too close. We started the boat again and move around. But this boat came up in here and started hooking up. You know, they were casting this way, pulling the, their lures toward the boat. So, it kind of got me thinking. Maybe because we were far enough and we were pulling our lures this way instead of this way, that that's why we weren't hooking up. And mind you, like I said, I have no concrete evidence other than what happened to us yesterday. So this is the, my kind of thought process, you know? This is what I do. I mean, I, I think of something, whether it's good or not, and just kind of troubleshoot from there. So next time I do go out there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try something, you know what I mean? So, like I said, we were on this boat casting this way. We were retrieving back toward the boat. Guys on the jetties were hooking up over here. Even this boat that came in on the other side of our drift, and he was casting this way, but he was pulling his lure back toward the jetty. He hooked up. We didn't hook up. So, I put a check mark there, but not because it was good, because we could hear them, the guys on the, the jetties cussing these guys out, you know, because they were too close. They were getting in their drift and everything else. So, they caught a few fish and they took off, but I still couldn't bring myself to get that desperate to catch a fish and cut these guys off over here, you know, on their fishing. So we stay far enough away to where, you know, it looked like we were close, but we could see where they were landing and we were throwing and we were nowhere near their lures and stuff like that. So, like I said, this is kind of my thought process. And the reason being too, because like I said, they were hooking up, but also too, I needed more proof than that. I needed to know that the guys on there were using our lures. I know several of them were, and they were hooking up. They caught, but we weren't. Here's some video right here of some guys that were out there and they were tearing it up. I mean, they, they caught six or seven jacks that day and then a two or three day meat haul, they caught dozens of, of jack rails while they were out there. Now, mind you, like I said, these guys went out there caught these big fish and you know the smallest ones are 20 pounds 15 pounds and bigger ones in the 30 and 40 pound range and then they got to walk them all off the jetty so like i said it's just kind of my hook thought up. process here of why we didn't hook up because we were working the lures in the wrong direction maybe the fish know that fish running toward the jetties are what they're looking for that's what's exciting them because even when we throw casting baits you know if it ain't swimming right in the current you don't get any hookups. And that was something that I learned a long time ago. Like I said, this is just kind of my thought process on why we didn't hook up. And I figured I'd share it to y'all uh, or with y'all. So check out these guys' videos. And, you know, like I said, this is what, what they were using. They were using the Gator Spoons. And that was a major deal because uh, another guy posted to Facebook that he was using Gators and the first thing a lot of people, well, you need to change that split ring, you need to change a hook, you need to do this. And the reason being is because they're so used to the sea striker spoons that are put out there and that's what you can do. Literally, you can pull them apart by hand. I've got a video and this is the link to the video showing the difference between a sea striker and a gator spoon. So if you're really interested in catching fish and knowing that they're gonna work, I mean, cause tractor veils are some hard, hard fighting fish out there. 
and these lures don't fall apart on you, this is what you'll really want to use. So again, you know, here at Hard Life Bait and Tackle, we got a huge assortment of the king spoons and the gator spoons. And actually, <laughs> we're running low on the three ounces uh, of the silver and the gold, and only because everybody's so used to those specific colors. However, I know guys out there were hitting with the white, uh, the powder coated white with the blue sticker on them. They were hitting with gold with the red sticker on them. They were hitting with silver with the blue sticker on them. And you know, it's because now the availability through our shop, they can get these different color spoons and they're trying them out. They're, they're going, hey, you know, they've caught out elsewhere with them, why not here? It's because the availability wasn't there. Now it is. So again, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed it. And um, I'm sorry if I kind of led y'all down the path, but at the same time too, I want y'all to know that this is a channel that whether I catch or I don't, I'm going to post it, you know, and I want y'all to know that I'm going to go out there and test and I'm always going to walk off with my head high because I know I did everything possible to make a catch happen. But if it doesn't, y'all going to know about it too, because like I said, you know, everybody thinks automatically that I'm always going to catch fish. It doesn't always happen. I mean, there's times where you go out there and you get skunk days at a time, even though you're doing everything right. <coughs> <coughs> it just happens that way so again guys this is team hard life captain albert sacuccia and if y'all haven't subscribed to our channel i highly encourage y'all to do so and be sure to go through our other videos because we got a lot of knowledge out there of different things that we're doing different things that we're testing and again we're always going to go out and put everything to the limit test it retest it and keep testing it because you never know when something will change or you may find something wrong with what you're doing. <sighs> so again, guys, thank you very much for watching our channel and keeping your comments in a positive manner and sharing your knowledge because, I mean, it really is a blessing to have the knowledge you've learned and for guys that want to get in on it. I mean, like I said, you help them, it's going to help you in the long run. So keep it, a, keep it open, you know, share the knowledge, guys. You all have a good one.